Greetings folks. In this video I'm going to show the absolute basics of connection to a flight control board uh, for motor and ESC and SBUS receiver. This was prompted by a viewer request from uh, Aaron's Escapades. In other videos I've shown in, in more detail how to connect everything to the flight control board but not the ESC and the motor so much or the SBUS receiver. So uh, I'll go through that. Now these are the basics of a complete FPV system with a flight control board. So we have the radio, receiver, flight control board, ESC, motor, battery, FPV camera and video transmitter, GPS unit and connecting to servos. Uh, all encased in the plane of course, but Aaron wanted to see it out of the plane so this is how we're going to do it. Uh, so I won't be doing the FPV and the GPS in this one, just the ESC motor and servos. Now I'll start off with the absolute basics because a lot of people uh, are coming to this from ready to fly quad so they have no idea about how to connect up a plane uh, and again I will state as I always do it is a very very good idea to learn how to put together a plane how to fly a plane before you even consider flight control boards you seriously will save yourself time and money and headaches if you do that but anyway I know a lot of people aren't going to pay any attention to that so let's just crack on so let's start with the basics of RC control. So we've got a good overview of what's going on. We have a receiver which is connected and bound to a model in your radio. The radio talks to the receiver and sends signals out to the pins here. This is a PWM receiver as well as a serial receiver. So PWM means that we have separate channels broken out onto separate sets of pins. Serial receiver means that all channels are sent down one cable. Uh, this is SBUS. So we can uh, directly connect servos and uh, motor controllers to each channel directly to the receiver. Or we can use the SBUS connector to connect to a flight control board. We'll start off with the PWM side of it anyway. So we have the receiver. We have uh, servos that plug into the receiver. And the receiver and the servos need five volts to get operating. So we'll plug in a five volt battery there. There's my little five volt battery. You can see the green light has come on. That indicates that it is bound and operating with the model in this radio. And now we have radio control of the receiver. If we're introducing a motor, then we need a, a speed controller as well. An ESC, electronic speed controller. Uh, so this connects to the motor and these motors are basically three phase motors so we have three wires that they connect from the ESC to the motor the ESC sends a sort of a, a rotating field through the three wires and uh, that spins the motor energizing electromagnetic coils uh, which are attracted to magnets in the motor and the motor can spin two ways. All we have to do to reverse the motor is swap two of these wires and it will happily spin in the other direction. And the speed controller connects into the throttle channel in your receiver. And when we plug the speed controller into the flight battery, the speed controller has an inbuilt voltage regulator to cut down the 12 volts from the battery down to 5 volts which can be used by the receiver and the uh, servo so now we have the receiver working the motor working that's the basics of an RC system really so now let's introduce the flight control board now instead of everything connecting into the receiver the servo and the, speed, and the electronic speed controller they will now connect into the flight control board and we can't connect the PWM connections to the flight control board. That has to be a serial connection like SBUS there. So we'll unplug these and connect the SBUS connection. So that's all channels going down one cable. And that will connect into the SBUS pins on the flight control board, which is these first set of pins here. Now the receiver and the servos need 5 volts to operate and that is not going to come from the speed controller in this case. The flight control board has its own 5 volt voltage regulator built in. 
all of these red pins here are at five volts. So we don't need two five volt sources sort of competing with each other. So what we need to do is pop that red wire out and make it safe. I'll just pop it into a little one wire terminator there. So now we only have the ground and the signal wire going into the flight control board. Now something I often do is actually pull out these two pins here that are on the S1 and the S2 slots there because we just don't need them. That's always going to be motor connections. We don't need the 5 volts from the ESC going into the board and we don't need uh, that 5 volts created by the board going out to anything else in those slots. So that is the speed controller connection there. And servos will plug into S3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and all of them. First two, S1 and S2 are for motors and the rest are for servos. Now we can plug this speed controller into the ESC out power there. We have the three cables connecting to the motor and we can now plug the battery in here. So now that's all working as well. So once again I'll show the overview. We have the radio which is talking to the receiver. The receiver is plugged in. This is an uh, S-Bus receiver now. We're using the S-Bus connection, plugging into the S-Bus pins on the flight control board, which are the first few pins there. Uh, that, incidentally, is on UR2. Uh, it is, and the S-Bus pin there is connected to the RX2 pin, but there's an inverter in between them because S-Bus is an inverted signal compared to normal uh, signal conventions for UARTs. So, receiver is connected to S-Bus, 5 volts or 4.5 volts and ground. The speed controller is getting its signal from S1 and S2 to regulate the speed of the motor. The power of the speed controller comes out of the ESC pads. Battery power goes into the battery cables and the ESC is connected to the, mo to the motor via these three phase wires. So with this setup I can just arm the board and operate the motor. If I had a GPS, I would have to wait until uh, six satellites and a 3D lock were, were obtained from the GPS before I could arm the board and uh, spin up the motor. So that's connection to a flight control board at its absolute basic level with no FPV and no uh, GPS. You would add those things later on, of course, for a proper flight control board FPV system but that should give you a basic overview of the connections uh, from the receiver, flight control board, ESC, servos, and motor and battery. That'll do it for this one. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.